Dear friends, welcome to Archbishop's House. It's Archbishop John here, and I'm pleased to be able to greet you as we enter this fourth week of retreat during Lent, and we reflect today on the Gospel of St John, which has in it those incredible words that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son. This speaks to us about the kind of God we follow, the kind of God who reaches out to us, the kind of God revealed in the person of the Lord Jesus, God's Son, our Saviour. God loved the world so much. In truth, God loves you so much and invites you into relationship with himself through his beloved Son. So we walk with the Lord Jesus following his footsteps as we journey towards Easter and new life. Let's listen together at the Gospel for the fourth Sunday of Lent from St John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, the Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds is sentence pronounced, that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for fear his actions should be exposed. But the man who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. May God bless you as we continue this Lenten retreat journey together. We join in praying together our retreat prayer. Loving Father and Creator, you search us and you know us. You are acquainted with all our ways in our great joy or profound sorrow, when in company or when alone, you are there. You lay your guiding hand upon us, such is your great love. Direct us now, we pray, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to walk humbly with the Lord Jesus, who shepherds us on our way to you, for nothing can separate us from your love. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus, your Son, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. As we continue our retreat, we build on what has gone before. We call to mind week one and the importance of setting aside time to be with Jesus. We acknowledge that like Jesus, sometimes the times of wilderness are the times that have borne fruit in our lives. In week two, we reflected on the importance and challenge of listening to God in scripture, in prayer and in our daily lives. And were introduced to Lexio Divina. Last week, Chris introduced praying with scripture using the imagination and led us in the practice of imaginative contemplation. We were encouraged to enter the scene and be there with Jesus. This week, we continue our journey in the footsteps of Jesus and begin to explore how we make good choices in our lives. Saint Ignatius of Loyola gave guidelines to help us to do this. As we journey with God in our everyday lives, we are not really making decisions between good and bad. 
but rather between the good and the better. And the difference between the good and the better can often be subtle. This week we are focusing on how we recognise God at work in our lives and choose accordingly. To help us to do this, we are going to use the Gospel of the fourth Sunday of Lent, John chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. John's Gospel, unlike that of the Synoptics, Matthew, Mark and Luke, is not written to tell us a story, but rather to present a theology, a knowledge of God, lived out in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. It contains some stories that are not contained in the synoptics, such as the woman at the well, John chapter 4, verse 1 to 42. But overall, it is trying to tell us not so much what Jesus did, but who Jesus is. The Gospel passage of the fourth Sunday of Lent tells that God loved the world so much that he sent his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. These words are about love, the kind of love that will place no limit on how far it will go to set the loved one free, to enable the loved one to find life. You are that loved one, as am I. In the spiritual exercises of St Ignatius of Loyola, There is a beautiful prayer exercise where the retreatant is invited to imagine God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, looking down on the earth in all its glory and seeing it in the midst of its reality, with love and hate, war and peace, violence and good works, sickness and health, wealth and poverty. Imagine this scene now. What do you see? Where is your attention drawn? It is into this reality that Jesus was born. He came into our world as a small, vulnerable, helpless human baby. He was born of Mary and brought up in the small town of Nazareth in Galilee in modern day Israel. He took on our humanity to be one with us. Being fully human and fully divine, he understood the challenge of our lives and the complexities with which we wrestle on a daily basis. He lived in an occupied land with conflict between the political and religious authorities. Out of love and longing to do the Father's will, he chose to descend into the messiness of our world and live among us. We often think that we need to be perfect for God, but God, in Jesus, freely entered our messiness, our chaos, our imperfect way of being, so that in him we might find our way to life. What does this tell us about the love of God? God's love is unconditional. We receive it not because of what we do or do not do, but because of who we are, children of God. God may not like some of our behaviour, but he still loves us as his children. How many human parents love their children, even though they get things wrong? Well, God's love is even more than that. 
In God, there is only freedom. The Incarnation is a work of the Trinity. As the second person of the Trinity, Jesus saw the reality of the world and in obedience to the Father, freely chose to enter our world. In love, he came down and became one of us, united with the Father and the Holy Spirit, yet fully human. From being a weak, vulnerable baby, born in a stable, he grew into a person who uses great interior freedom to do all he could to liberate people from the sin, pain and confusion that oppressed them. Elsewhere in John's Gospel, Jesus says of his purpose, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Some of us may have grown up with an image of God as a controlling parent. Do as I say or else. Yet we are made in God's image, who from the very beginning gave us free will. God never forces us into a relationship with him. He wants our free and loving response. If we only act out of fear or duty, how can we possibly get to know the God of love? And yet, for all this, it is often difficult for us to be free and to choose what is good and leads us into life. Jesus' freedom threatened those that were locked in by religious rules and regulations and caused them to turn against the very one who had come to save them. When we get locked in by situations, or people, or even religion, we too can feel threatened and less free. Being unfree often leads us to act in ways that stop us from seeing the truth as it really is. The more unfree we are, the less clearly we see things. During the trial of Jesus before Pilate, the religious authorities went through the crowd and told people to shout for the crucifixion of Jesus. Reason went out of the window. Mob rule took over. Imagine for a moment being in that crowd, or another situation like it, where others were telling you what to think, say and do. What went through your mind? Did you shout loudly or in a whisper? In my best moments, I would like to think I'd have stood up to them and said no, or at least remained silent. I don't know about you, but even shouting crucify him during the readings of the Passion can be a challenge. I don't want to call out to condemn the one who gives me life. Yet we all have the capacity to act against our best selves. The less free we are, the easier it is to make decisions which are less than good. Can you think of areas in your life where you might not be free? In relationships, at work, at home, struggling with addiction, maybe in your use of social media. One prayer that St Ignatius of Loyola gave to his followers that can be very helpful is called the examine. Used regularly, it can help us grow in awareness of how God is working in our lives. It also helps us recognise patterns of thought and behaviour that tend to get in the way of our cooperating with God's invitation to us. The name of this prayer, the examine, can be off-putting and sometimes confused with an examination of conscience. It is neither an exam nor a way of judging ourselves. 
like all prayer, it is done in a response to God, already at work in our lives. Reviewing our day is a way of becoming more aware of where and how we have met God in our everyday lives. It is also a prayerful way to bring before God the events and activities of the day, so that we don't carry our anxieties and frustrations unobserved and unhealed into our sleep and then into the day to come. So let's now move into our time of prayer. Come in into the presence of God. Take a moment or two to find a comfortable position. Don't change your pattern of breathing. Just notice how you are and gently focus your attention and awareness to a place within. Be still. Take time to come into the presence of God. Hear God say to you, as he says in Isaiah 43, You are precious in my eyes and honoured, and I love you. You are in the presence of God, in the presence of love. Become aware of that love with which God looks upon you now. With God, we look back on our day. As you review your day, what comes to mind? How did you feel as you woke up? Were you tired or full of energy? What was the first thing you remembered? Let your day unfold before you like a film. What do you see? What is it you remember? Do not rush this time, but be led by God. Allow yourself to remember the day together with God. Give thanks. As you look back on your day, what do you notice? For what do you want to give thanks? What are the things that have lifted your spirits, no matter how small? Do not try too hard or become analytical. See what emerges and give thanks to God. As you reflect on God's presence in your life today, see what comes to the surface. Ask for light. From this place of gratitude, ask God for light to see the times, events, where you are more resistant to God and his love. Together with God, review your day. Look for the stirrings in your heart and the thoughts that have led to your actions. See those that have drawn you to God and those that have taken you away. When you become aware of things that have taken you away, do not judge them or analyse them. Just name them. Become aware of them. Let them be. Remember, you are in the presence of God who knows you and loves you. Ask for forgiveness and healing. Look at that experience and ask for forgiveness, trusting in the immensity of God's love that removes all burdens, casts out fear and binds up wounds. Look in to the day ahead. Bring to God any anxieties you may have about the day ahead. Ask for the gift of what you most need to live fully in God's presence. Above all, trust in God.
And finally, gently bring your focus and attention to where you are in your room and end your prayer by thanking God or using words that are familiar, such as the Lord's Prayer, whatever feels right and comfortable. The more often we use this prayer, the more aware we become of what we are grateful for and where we sometimes get in the way of God at work in our lives. This prayer is one tool that enables us to identify the interior movements within and to recognise what draws us towards and away from God. The more familiar I become with these, the freer I become. The more interiorly free I become, the more I can respond through service to the God who first showed me his freedom and love. Have a blessed week and be assured of our prayers for you as we journey onwards in the footsteps of Jesus.